Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the course Physical Chemistry 101. My name is Dr. Lauf and today's topic is how to express a gas in numbers macroscopically. Thermodynamics aims to describe systems. Particularly simple systems are gaseous systems. To express a gas microscopically in numbers means a phenomenological description of the state variables without any underlying model. A mathematical description with a function connecting the state variables. A single component system can be represented by a surface in PVT space. At high temperatures and low densities, or in this green marked area, the system is homogeneous and gaseous. And may be described in a particularly simple way. If we zoom out this area, we have the phase diagram of a gas, or more precisely, of an ideal or perfect gas. A typically curved surface. If we examine a gas experimentally, we find very simple relationships between the state variables P, pressure, V, volume, and T, temperature. Let's examine the compressibility kappa of a gas, like the scientists Boyle and Mariotte did several hundred years ago. Examining how volume depends on pressure, we find that at constant temperature, a doubling of pressure causes the volume to be reduced to half. We can say that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. The product P times V is a constant. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. P is inversely proportional to V. This is Boyle's law. With its help, you can easily calculate the compressibility of an ideal gas to 1 over P. If you represent Boyle's law graphically, the PV diagram shows the following figure. 1 is the initial state, large volume, V1, small pressure, P1. 2 is the final state, smaller volume, larger pressure. The two points lie on a hyperbola, mathematically described as P times V is constant. 12.4 liters times 2 bars is exactly the same as 24 times 8 liters times 1 bar. The same representation in the PVT phase diagram gives the red line a sectional view of the surface at a constant temperature. At higher temperature, the isotherm would run in this form, the yellow line. If we examine the thermal expansion coefficient alpha of a gas, we come to the laws of Charles and Galissac. If we keep pressure constant and change temperature, the volume will be proportional to temperature. Twice as high temperature in kelvins means twice as large volume. So V over T is constant and the thermal expansion coefficient alpha can be calculated. We observe similar behavior for changing the pressure at constant volume. Pressure is proportional to temperature in kelvins for isochoric heating. This is the so-called Charles law. P over T is constant. P is proportional to T. 
If we plot this in a diagram, we obtain a straight line. State 1 corresponds to a lower pressure, P1, at a low temperature, T1. State 2 corresponds to a higher pressure, P2, at a higher temperature, T2. The two states are on a zero point straight line. If we extend the line to a temperature of zero Kelvin, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, both the pressure and volume of an ideal gas disappear. Both Charles Isaacs and Gelly Sachs isobars can be represented in the three dimensional phase diagram and result in straight lines on the curved surface. If we keep both pressure and temperature constant and only change the amount of substance of a gas, then we'll find a very simple relationship. V is proportional to N. In fact, a really trivial relationship. One mole of a gas has half the volume as two moles of gas have. But the molar volume of a gas is a very special property. According to Avogadro, the number of molecules or atoms in a specific volume of an ideal gas is independent of their size. So molar volume of a gas is independent of gas time. At IUPAC standard state, one mole of any gas or gas mixture takes 24.8 liters. The molar volume of a gas at DIN normal conditions is 22.4 liters per mole. If we combine these four gas laws, we obtain the so-called ideal gas law. This is law is represented mathematically by this typically curved surface in PVT space. The ideal gas law is a function of two variables. It's the equation of state for a gaseous system. P is equal to R times T over Vm. We describe pressure P as a function of temperature T and the molar volume Vm. The proportionally constant R is a universal gas constant and is the same for all gases. By mathematical transformation, we easily can derive Gallus-Sachs law and paul mayotte law from the combined gas. Graphically, this corresponds to the PT plane projection or the PV plane projection of the PVT surface. The ideal gas law describes the states of all gases and gas mixtures. It is often formulated as P times V equals N times R times T. P pressure, V volume, N number of moles, T temperature and R the universal gas constant. In SI units, the gas constant is 8.314 joule per mole and Kelvin or 0.082 liter atmospheres per mole and Kelvin. If we do not want to use the number of moles n, but the number of gas particles capital N, we have to use the Boltzmann's constant K instead of R. With the ideal gas law, we are able to calculate any state on this PVT surface. The ideal gas law can be used to determine the molar mass of a gas. A gaseous nitrogen oxide with a nitrogen over oxide ratio of 1 over 2 either has the formula NO2 or N2O4. An investigation of the state of this gas using the ideal gas law could clarify for this. We determine the mass of the sample of nitric oxide do measurements of pressure, volume and temperature. We now may determine the molecular weight using these four data. The molar mass is a quotient of mass M over the amount of substance N. According to the ideal gas law, N equals PV over RT, 
In summary, we get this formula. By plugging in all variables in SI units, we calculate the molecular weight of 0.092 kilograms per mole, 92 grams per mole. The gas is obviously dinitrogen tetroxide, N2O4. The ideal gas law also holds for gas mixtures. If we calculate the total pressure of this mixture, we take the entire amount N total, multiply by RT and divide by V. If we virtually remove all components but one, the red one, we may also calculate a virtual pressure, which was called partial pressure by Mr. Dalton. The partial pressure of the red component is the pressure that this component would exert if it was the only component in the volume. Each component has a partial pressure in a gas mixture. Also, the measurement of the partial pressure requires some effort. Selective pressure sensors have to be used. The calculation can be done by a simple ideal gas equation. If we divide partial pressure by total pressure, we get N over N total, which is the molar fraction Y. The partial pressures P sub I add up to the total pressure, just like the moles N sub I do to the total amount of substance. These are the two formulations of Dalton's law. An important gas mixture is air. Dry air consists of about 78 mole percent nitrogen and 21 mole percent oxygen. At a total pressure of 1 bar, the partial pressure of nitrogen N sub N2 is equal to 0 0.78 bar, and the partial pressure P sub O2 of oxygen is equal to 0 0.21 bar. Let's summarize today's lecture. The surface of state in a PBT diagram of a gas is mathematically well described by the ideal gas law. P equals RT over Vm. In gas mixtures, we may define partial pressures, P sub I, which add up to the total pressure. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.